Well, African swine fever is sweeping through parts of Asia, and this is really how, where it all started. And this is a report that was in Chinese, it's translated from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs in China. And it was released on August 3rd. And they reported a pig swine epidemic occurring in Shenyang City, Liaoning Province. This is the first time that African swine fever has occurred in China or in Asia in general. And that's where it all started. So that was August 3rd, 2018. Fast forward about a month and pretty quick movement was the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN uh, held a three day emergency meeting to examine the most recent developments in China following the outbreak of African swine fever in the country. And they were, they got together all these experts to, in Asia to determine how they could uh, keep the spread under control and uh, what are the risk of transboundary spread of ASF, African swine fever. Um, they say outbreaks of African swine fever have occurred in Europe and the Americas as early as the 1950s and through the 1980s. However, in 2007, a new introduction of ASF occurred in the Republic of Georgia, which then spread to neighboring countries and deeply affected Eastern Europe. Now, the thing that was kind of scary early on, and it really proved out to be a big problem, was that in China they were finding outbreaks up to a thousand kilometers apart in different parts of the country. So how is it spreading? China produces more than half the world's pigs, and while it, it poses no threat to human health, African swine fever can devastate the swine population. In its most virulent form, it is 100% fatal to the animals who contract the virus. And during the meeting back in last September, uh, one of the regional managers for FAO said, it's critical that this region be ready for the very real possibility that ASF could jump the border into other countries. Yeah, and sure enough, that's what happened. So let's take a look at the latest uh, ASF situation update in Asia. And you can see the map here. And we have a bunch of cases up here in Mongolia. Of course, China has got a ton of them. Cambodia and Vietnam has been hit quite hard too. And uh, now even Hong Kong. So here's the latest situation update in China. Since the China Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs confirmed its first African swine fever outbreak in Liaoning Province on August 3, 2018, 133 ASF outbreaks have been detected in 32 provinces in the country. More than 1.1 million pigs have been culled in an effort to halt further spread. Um, Mongolia saw their first uh, case in January of this year, and so far they've seen 11 outbreaks in six provinces, and more than 3,000 pigs have been culled, which is at least 10% of the total pig population in Mongolia. So that's huge for, for that country, right? Vietnam. Since the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development confirmed its ASF outbreaks on 19 February 2019, a total of 38 provinces have reported outbreaks and 1.5 million pigs have been culled. And then of course then there's Cambodia and they saw their first uh, outbreak on April 2nd of this year and over 2,000 pigs have died or been culled. Now, when they did epidemiological studies on these outbreaks, uh, it revealed that there was three major causes of spread of ASF virus. 46% were by vehicles and workers without disinfection. 34% by swill feeding. And 19% by transport of live pigs and their products across regions. So, yeah, it's spreading and it's spreading pretty good in the region. And very recently, that was um, earlier this month, as a matter of fact, 
um, the Hong Kong Agriculture and Fisheries um, and Conservation Department confirmed the first African swine fever virus found in a pig in a slaughterhouse. And according to a quote from Hong Kong Secretary for Food and Health, Professor Sophia Chan, she says, so I just now chaired an interdepartmental meeting at once uh, with a bunch of other agencies to discuss the response action and also any follow-up work. So in order to minimize the risk of ASF virus spreading from the slaughterhouse, all pigs at that slaughterhouse will be culled so the thorough cleansing and also disinfection could be conducted. And the operations were suspended. They are, they are reopened since uh, this report. So what effect does it have? Well, here's one report out of a, a, a European uh, website. And they're saying, pork lovers worldwide are wincing at prices that have jumped up to 40% as African swine fever in China's vast pig herds sends shockwaves through global meat markets. China produces and consumes two-thirds of the world's pork, but supplies are falling as Beijing destroys herds and blocks shipments. So yeah. So while this virus does not uh, have any pathology to human beings, it is definitely affecting uh, food sources and economics and possibly some uh, food insecurity in some of these countries like Cambodia, for example. And a lot of other countries around Asia are starting to take countermeasures, countries that haven't been affected yet. I've seen reports from Thailand and this one's from the Philippines. And uh, they just passed a resolution to st strictly monitor the entry of packed imported pork products to ensure no such imported products coming from China and other countries affected by African swine fever or pig Ebola are brought into the city and to prevent our city's hogs from exposure to the virus. This is in one particular city in uh, Bacolod City in the Philippines. Let me just point something up real quick. This is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Uh, I see a lot of reports calling this pig Ebola. Uh, there is actually a pig Ebola. It's called uh, Ebola Restin. Um, so there's actually one of the six Ebola viruses is a pig Ebola, basically. But um, yeah, so a lot of people are using pig Ebola, particularly in uh, you know, titles of the stories and I, I don't know if they're doing that for clickbait or or what but that's uh, kind of a dishonest way to, to to report this in my opinion what about the United States well the USDA reports they're enhancing African swine fever surveillance efforts and it says the USDA is furthering its overall African swine fever preparedness efforts with the implementation of a surveillance plan as part of this plan, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service will work with the swine industry, the states, and veterinary diagnostic laboratories to test for ASF. African swine fever is an area of high interest among the veterinary community in our swine industry, and we continue to take action to prepare for this deadly disease. This is according to Greg Ibeck. He's the Undersecretary for Marketing and Regulatory Programs. While we are confident that our overlapping safeguards will continue to keep ASF out of the United States, an enhanced surveillance program will serve as an early warning system, helping us find any potential disease much more quickly. It will also minimize virus spread and support efforts to restore trade markets and animal movements as quickly as possible should the disease be detected. And you can check below in the, in the comments section where I'm going to put an uh, interview I had with uh, Professor Stephen Higgs over at Kansas State University about the concern of African swine fever coming to the United States. Well, let me go ahead and close out with some kind of good news concerning this. And uh, there's been some new research done on a vaccine that can immunize wild boar. Wild boar, like pigs, are, uh, are can be uh, 
infected with African swine fever. And it says, a new vaccine developed by scientists can immunize wild boar against African swine fever, a disease which is currently threatening 55 pig-producing countries. The deadly, highly contagious disease is ravaging parts of Europe and Asia, including Vietnam and the world's biggest pig producer, China. But scientists have now demonstrated that oral immunization of wild boar conferred a 92% protection against highly pathogenic strain of ASF. And this was published in the Frontiers in Ve Veterinary Science. Um, and it says, researchers also provide evidence that this immunity can be passed on via contact with immunized wild boars, but further studies are needed to examine exactly how this occurs, as well as the safety of repeated administration. And th this is by researchers with the VisaVet Health Surveillance Center, I believe that's in Madrid. Uh, Dr. Jose Angel Barasona says, African swine fever uh, is of enormous concern for our pig industry. And our study demonstrates the effectiveness of this first oral vaccine against this disease in Eurasian wild boar. So that's some pretty good news coming out of um, uh, that organization in Madrid that they're working on this oral vaccine. So anyway, um, you, you can, uh, if you like the, the topic today, you can go down below. Um, uh, give us a up uh, up uh, arrow. Give us a leave us a comment, and of course subscribe if you enjoy it. And there'll be more um, of these news briefs coming out here on Outbreak News TV. And again, thanks. We really appreciate it. And don't forget to check us out at the website outbreaknewstoday.com, the podcast Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated. 2019.